Good afternoon, dear friends, and welcome to this Holy Mass of Thursday, the 15th week in Ordinary Time. Today we also celebrate the optional memorial of Our Lady of Carmel. In today's Mass, I continue to pray for all of you and pray for your families and pray for all the concerns that you carry every day in your heart the things that burden you more, the things that place heavier weight on you, the things that keep you awake at night and restless in the day. I like to I like for us to bring all of those to God today because He offers us hope Himself. I'd also like to pray for those who are sick, especially those who are very sick from this COVID-19. Pray and ask God for God's healing. And pray that doctors and nurses may find the right combination therapy to help them find relief. I'll also want to pray for those who have birthdays, anniversaries, or other celebrations on this day. May God grant you many more healthy, happy, and joyful years to celebrate in the future. I will pray for um, the brother of a dear friend of mine who passed away or yesterday from this virus. Allen Donovan. I pray and ask that God may grant Allen Donovan um, rest and peace and that God may bring comfort and, and healing to his family. I'll invite you to bring your own intentions and let us pray to God. Our opening hymn today will be City of God. City of God. Awake from your slumber, arise from your sleep, the new day is dawning for all those who weep. The people in darkness have seen a great light, the Lord of our longing has conquered the night. Let us build a city of God. May our tears be turned into dancing. For the Lord, our light and our love, has turned the night into day. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. To prepare ourselves, dear friends, for this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Father, may the prayers of the Virgin Mary protect us and help us to reach Christ her Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Our first reading is a reading from the prophet Isaiah. The way of the just is smooth. The path of the just you make level. Yes, for your way and your judgments, O Lord, will look to you. Your name and your title are the desires of our souls. My soul yearns for you in the night. Yes, my spirit within me keeps vigil for you. When your judgment dawns upon the earth, the world's inhabitants learn justice. O oh Lord, you make out peace to us, for it is you who have accomplished all that we have done. O oh Lord, oppressed by your judgments, we cry out in anguish under your chastising. As a woman about to give birth, with writes and cries out in her pains, so were we in your presence, O Lord. 
we conceived and read in pain, giving birth to win. Salvation we have not achieved for the earth. The inhabitants of the world cannot bring it forth, but your dead shall live. Your corpses shall rise. Awake and sing, you who lie in the dust, for your dew is a dew of light, and the land of shades gives birth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the song is from heaven. The Lord, the Lord looks down on the earth. From heaven, the Lord looks down on the earth. You, O Lord, abide forever, and your name through generations. You will arise and have mercy on Zion, for it is time for pit to pity her, for her stones are dear to your servants, and her dust moves them to pity. From heaven, the Lord looks down on the earth. The nations shall revere your name, O Lord, and all the kings of the earth your glory. When the Lord has revered Zion and appeared in his glory, when he has regarded the prayer of the destitute and not despised their prayer, from heaven the Lord looks down on the earth. Let this be written for the generation to come, and let his future creatures praise the Lord. The Lord looks down from his holy height. From heaven he beheld the earth to hear the groaning of the prisoners to release those doomed to die. From heaven the Lord looks down on the earth. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest, says the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, I, um, I feel very blessed to have this opportunity to share not just the sacrifice but also share the power that comes from the Word of God with you um, today. And I hope that the Word that is spoken today, the Word that is reflected upon today, the Word that is um, released today will bless you with hope will bless you with inspiration and will bless you with every strength and grace that you need to face this moment and to face everything else that puts so much pressure on your life. Now, um, in naturally as human beings, we do have different levels of human needs. We have physical needs, we have emotional needs and we have spiritual needs and at all three levels our lives are we, we, we find happiness we find contentment we find peace we find joy we find everything good when we are healthy at all these levels that means we have at least a minimum realization of all of our needs at this area. Now, it is very hard for you to have all of your needs met at all of these levels. But generally, we expect that if I am working so hard 
to maintain good health, which is the very first basic need, which is nourishment. If I'm working so hard for nourishment, I expect to get good health. Now, I would get frustrated if I was doing such a good job with making sure I eat right and I do all the right things, I exercise, I, 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 I do safety measures, I take safety measures in everything and still I wasn't healthy. That would frustrate me because that means my effort is not rewarded with the commensurate outcome that is expected based on the level of efforts I am putting. So that's where our stress begins to develop. That's where our stress begins to not just develop, but also escalate. That well, I'm doing all the right things. Why am I not getting the results? So in, in the theory of effort and reward imbalance, that's where stress begins to develop. That I am putting in so much effort and I'm not getting enough reward or not getting at least the reward I expect. Now, that is true at the physical. It is also true at the emotional. For if you are in a relationship, married, all right, and you are doing everything to be there for your spouse, to care for his needs or her needs, to make sure that he is happy or she is happy, and you don't get that, you don't get that feedback, or at least you don't get the same treatment, all right, yeah, that means your emotional needs are going to suffer. And why is that? Because in your mind, you believe you're doing everything for the other person and you're not getting anything back. So there is not a commensuration all right, of effort that you put in and the results that you get. That will definitely drive up your anxiety level. That will definitely drive up your stress level and make it less likely that you are going to be happy. You're going to feel burdened, emotionally exhausted, emotionally spent and in most cases angry upset frustrated that you are not receiving what you deserve it can also be true at the spiritual level where you are doing all the right things at least in your mind in your judgment it's possible you are doing all it you exert yourself you put in so much effort in everything that you do you go to church, even in doing this virus, you're making sure you look for every opportunity to do what's right. And you don't feel the comforting or the consolation of the Holy Spirit. And in the, in the words of St. John of the Cross, you feel like you are in this dark night of the soul. That is where spiritual exhaustion comes from. You feel like, what else do I have to do to get God's attention? Now there's a possibility you are stressed out and overburdened at all of these three levels. You feel like you're doing everything right. You're just not getting what you deserve. Now if you feel that way at any of these levels, the Lord Jesus is speaking to you. He says, come to me. Come to me all you who labor and are so overburdened. Come to me and I will give you rest. Now, I, I like to, um, to reflect on what the Lord is trying, or is saying, yeah, not trying, he's saying to us. There are so many of us who confuse hard work, working hard, with working smart. All right, so we think if I am doing all of this, I wake up every day and do stuff and get, I keep myself busy the entire day, that means I am working, I'm doing what I should be doing. Now, um, hard work is good, but if you just exert yourself, having industry and just putting all that physicality or even that emotional investment, but not doing it right, not doing it smart, you realize you might exert so much and don't get the benefits. Because sure, your hard work is not hitting the target. Now, let, let me use... Um, an analogy that I'm sure um, I, I, I can relate to. If you were a maxman as a soldier, your ability to fire so many rounds doesn't mean that you're hitting your target. You don't need to waste your rounds. You just need to know how to get your target right. That means fire smart. Don't just do be busy 
firing as many as many rounds as you can when you're not even seeing what the target is on the other side so when the lord says come to me all you who labor and are overburdened and i will give you rest i'll give you rest that means i will lower your anxieties because sometimes it's your anxieties that make you do the things you do constantly you just get used to this routine of doing stuff you are anxious and you're thinking by doing more and more of this i should get what i want god says no i need to get your anxieties anxiety level down just so you're able to do to do what you're doing right now but do it smartly and get the results and the reward you deserve it's not okay just firing the rounds i want you to fire the rounds well and get the target you're looking for and you can do that at the physical just as you can do it at the emotional and do it at the spiritual level the lord didn't say i'm going to take away your stress take, take away what, what you should be doing no he's not taking it away he just wants to teach you how to do it well and do it smartly hear what he says he goes on he says take my yoke upon you and learn from me so i want to teach you smart i want to make sure that you know how to um, relate to your needs identify what your needs are and how to meet them there is always the smarter way of doing everything on earth to get the most results at all times everything just name anything there is the smartest way to do it but there's also the dumb way or the more difficult way to do it say for instance if i was going to drive if i was going to get to new york i have several options to get to new york my choose to fly choose to drive maybe drive a ferrari or drive a truck or even drive a motorbike or drive a bike or, or work on food now these are all all of all of these things can take me to new york but depending on what i choose based on every analysis i make the plane could be the fastest way could be the fastest way however that may not happen right now why is that because i must take into consideration the fact that the airports are very very light planes are not flying as they normally would do because of the COVID 19. so that means while the plane may be the fastest way to get me to new york at this time driving my car would be the fastest way why because i might spend the entire day looking for a flight from here to new york so that's what flying or that's where traveling smart will mean so jesus is saying to you and saying to me there is no need god is never going to give you more than you can manage so if you have more than you feel you're able to manage you are not you may i don't want to say you are not but you may be working yourself exerting too much of your energy without too much of your smart and god knows you have the smart you're just not using it so he says come let me teach you how to make the most of everything i have put in your hand everything you have right now is a blessing if only you can manage it and handle it very well every opportunity before you right now or every challenge before you right now is an opportunity it is disguised you just need to learn how to use it and i pray dear friends that we are able to hear this invitation come to me all you who labor and are burdened and i will give you rest take my yoke and learn from me for i am meek and humble of heart and you will find rest that means you will find a lowering of your anxiety a lowering of your stress levels a lowering of the pressure that life is now having on you and he says for my yoke is easy my burden is light that means you would carry it and not even feel like you're carrying something because you've learned to carry it right not carry it where it breaks your back see in the right way i can lift twice the size of my weight i do that in my training i, I can lift twice the size of my weight the right way but doing it poorly i may i may break my back lifting just half the size of my weight so everything has to do with doing it the right way and doing it the smart way so may god help us to learn how to handle the things that he allows in our lives and allows before us as always i'd like you to remember that you are the delight of the almighty god god loves you
very much. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. We worry about many things in this life. St. Paul tells us that there is no need to worry, but that we should ask God with prayer and thanksgiving for what we need. For the church of God, that the beloved vineyard of the Lord may produce its fruits for his glory, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved nation, that our elected representatives will take, will let God be their guiding force, and that the suffering of God's people may appeal to their hearts and consciences. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peacemakers, that their efforts will bring real peace in families, in communities, in countries, and between nations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those gathered here at this time and those who may gather after this time to celebrate and to worship, that we will give more of our time to learn from God and be available to others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have asked our prayers at this time, for those who are overburdened by, this, by the pressures of life, that they may feel their weight lifted up by God's grace and intervention. For those who are sick, especially those who are so sick from this virus, that they may hear God's word spoken for their healing and total recovery. For those who have died, especially Allen, Danover, pray and ask that God may grant him rest and bring comfort to his family. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have birthdays or anniversaries today, that God may grant them many more joyful and happy years to celebrate. And for you who have other needs in your heart, that the good God that we serve and who loves us may reach out and minister to your needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask our blessed mother's intercession as we say, Hail Holy Queen, Mother of Mercies, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To you do we cry, poor banished children of Eve, to you do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this veil of tears. Turn that most gracious advocate, your eyes of mercy towards us. And after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of our womb, Jesus. O clement, so loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Let us pray. Father, your son was a stone rejected. We accept him with thanksgiving and confidently bring our prayers to him through our blessed mother on this memorial of our Lady of Carmel. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed I Lord God of all creation, for three of us who have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed I, Lord God of all creation, for three of goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of the man hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Look upon the offerings of your church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father, most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, 
your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent us our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of a virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and the saints, we declare our glory as with one voice we are clean. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like a dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. The second acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Arlen Danova, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant, O oh Lord, that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merry to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence in the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace I need you in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always and with your spirit. Dear friends, let us offer each other the sign of that peace. And from me to all of you, may God's peace rest and abide now and always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
look up my sisters and brothers and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word and my soul shall be. For the grace of spiritual communion in all those who are still unable to attend Mass and receive the Eucharist, let us pray. Most benevolent God, you offer us grace to meet every need. Through your word, but especially in your sacrament, for all your children who are still unable to attend Mass, be nourished by your word and enlivened by this sacrament. We ask for this grace of spiritual communion, especially for all those who are, have labored and feel burdened by life that they may feel their anxieties resting and lifted and their burdens lifted. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Having consumed this gift, we pray, O oh Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effect upon us may ever grow. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and sins of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell, Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to all of you for joining us at this Mass. I pray that whatever burden you feel at this time, whatever pressures that life is placed on you, that you may receive this invitation from the Lord and, and, and surrender all of this to Him. Let Him show you how to live through the valley of the shadow of death and have nothing to fear, to have to deal with everything that life throws at you and never lose, it, never lose an ounce of sleep or rest or peace because He gives you everything you need to handle everything life brings your way. If you forget everything I said, don't forget that you right now in this time are still the delight of Almighty God. God loves you very much. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Through the prayers of our Blessed Mother, may God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. So because today is the optional memorial of our lady of Mount Carmel, who will sing a song to our blessed mother. Immaculate Mary, your praises we sing, renowned in splendor with Jesus our King. Ave, ave, Ave Maria, Ave Ave Maria, in heaven they blessed your glory proclaim, on earth with thy children invoke your sweet name, Ave 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 Maria, Ave, Ave, Maria.